Today, I have more power adapters. Surprise. These are unique though, as they have a universal socket and have adjustable pins for plugging into things, which means more things to check out. Safety is always a concern on these multi-port adapters, so we'll have to check that out also. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description, and Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons. The three power adapters for today are Unidapt, Sewer, and Zender. This is the Unidapt adapter. Packaging is fairly standard. The specifications for this state up to 3.4 amps of 5 volt output or roughly 17 and a half watts of charging capability shared between four USB-A ports. There is an extra fuse in the box, so these devices are fused. The plug show EU has a small dual pin, like Italian style plug, but the German style is a larger pin, so I'm not sure it'll work in both. And a US plug, an Australia and New Zealand plug, and the big plug, United Kingdom. There is no earthing, so the earth pin is plastic. Looking at the casing of the adapter, there is no safety listing, as I don't think there is a safety listing for devices like this yet. The doors on the front of the device are shuttered though, and I did probe around with a multimeter while plugged in, and I couldn't find any live metal bits I could get my probe onto. I did this for all the adapters. The Suair is almost identical to the Unidapt adapter, except it adds a few more watts, 25. Comes with a USB cable as well, which we'll check out in round four of the USB cables video. It does have one USB-C port. The current limit on the USB-C port is set at three amps. The USB-A ports are supposed to stop at two amps, but we'll have to check that out. There is a resettable fuse, so you don't have to take anything apart if you overload the AC outlet or draw too much current. The user manuals for all these adapters don't tell you a lot. Basically, take it out and use it. Mostly information about how to use it relatively safely. The 61 watt Zender is the most expensive by far, but it also has the most USB output power capability. This also has a resettable fuse. This has the same kind of outlet arrangement as the other two. There is also no safety listing. I found that the USB port supplies 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed output voltage power delivery 3.0 modes. This also has an 11 volt PPS or variable output voltage mode. I tested this mode and found that it can deliver 25 watts for Samsung fast charging, but no super fast charging. The power adapter doesn't reset on plugging into the other USB ports, but as soon as you try to use power, then it does reset the smart USB-C port into five volt mode. Really, it doesn't share the power, and it will struggle to charge multiple devices if one needs more than five volts to operate. There's a blue LED pinhole on the bottom, so you know it's on. The Unidab travel adapter packaging weighs 28 grams, and the power adapter weighs 126 grams. The sewer packaging weighs 83 grams, including the USB cable, and the power adapter weighs 138 grams. The Zender travel packaging weighs 97 grams, and the power adapter weighs 174 grams. For 61 watts, this is a lot of packing material and the weight but it also fits a lot of the plugs. Okay, let's see how these things plug and unplug into various outlets and things. The most exciting part. The uni adapter seems to work fine with the US, but I don't have a proper Australia or New Zealand plug to, or outlet to test with this. Uh, the UK plug and socket also seem to work fine. The issue I am finding with this one is that the large pin German style EU plug does not fit. I tried it both ways around and unless it is a standard practice use a hammer to get the plug in, it doesn't fit. So Germany is out on this one. The Suair seems to be compatible with all plugs and works well with all the various plugs and sockets I have at least. The Zender also follows along and works well with all the various plugs and sockets I have available. I'm going to have to pick up a few more of these plugs and sockets to do more testing on these. Thankfully, none of these adapters have the tendency of the death adapters, which leave the mains easily exposed and don't have any proper protection at the outlet level, which is a requirement for reasonable safety. None of these devices have safety listings as we saw, but this is something that was not unexpected as these don't fit into any basic category. The manufacturers all made some basic attempts at making them safe though. There aren't any easily accessible live bits on the outside casing and they're all fused devices. Technically no UKCA, so not for sale in the UK. Yep. So the final check for safety on these devices is whether or not the terminals are constructed with reasonable components, clearance, and creepage to meet safety requirements. I see a teardown video in the future. So final verdict on safety will have to wait until then. All of these power adapters met the idle requirements for DOE 6 efficiency level, but the two smaller adapters did meet the efficiency requirements during active power mode. The Zender, however, did meet these requirements. The idle power consumption is on screen for all three. The overload condition for each of these adapters was different. The Unidapt allowed 
all the power to be delivered on one port and overloaded at 19 watts. The sewer followed similar suit for the USB-A ports and overloaded at 26 watts. This is a, too much current for a USB-A port. The Zender followed better practice and its more modern supply and overloaded at 66 watts. All recovered to 5 volts without a plug or unplug cycle. No surprise at all here, but none of these adapters have power factor correction. On the two smaller adapters, I wouldn't expect it, especially not at the price point, but the Zender could have stood alone though. The power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current, and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. The lines on the graph should all be the same shape. I didn't do any thermals on these, but with the larger cases and lower wattages, I didn't notice any excessive heating, so it didn't bother. The DC voltages are stable and a bit more sloppy versus some of the competition out there, but they did all stay within the basic specifications of the USB standard. So this is a basic USB-A adapter. It has a fairly low power level, the idle power consumption is reasonable, but then it isn't terribly efficient at converting power. It should charge phones on the slow boat without any problem. The THD and power factor are dismal. A little AC line filtering could improve the idle score, but many don't bother at this price point, and I'm not too surprised. The story isn't much different with the sewer adapter. The THD and power factor are also terrible. It is a little more total output power, but the power quality only moves marginally up. The Zender starts to show some reasonable numbers on the efficiency side, but it still suffers on the poor power factor in THD. With the extra space in this adapter, the idle THD being what it is, is unacceptable. Idle power consumption is good though, and these numbers do meet the DOE6 efficiency requirements. In comparison with other adapters, the Unidapt is low compared with the 20 watt Ugreen. I don't have it on here, but this is actually on par with Apple's lower watt offerings. The sewer is low compared with this category topping Belkin 30 watt power adapter. The Zender tries as much as it can, but it doesn't quite eat out when over the 65 watt Anchor Nano 2, but it does okay. For reference, the chart toppers are also thrown in here so you can see how much higher power quality numbers are at these higher wattages. As a part of this system though, the performance has to be good at lower wattages also. On the idle graph, these are all zeros for power quality, basically noise generators. The power consumption is very low though, so they aren't making a lot of noise, and really, you probably won't be leaving these plugged in as they are travel adapters. On the average power consumption graph, the alternating current power quality on these devices takes a fairly low positions in each category. Far from the lowest, but not winning any awards. For power adapters, these will all work. The Unidap power adapter does all the things it claims to do except, except German plugs. You are all out of luck with this one unless you have a hammer laying around. The power quality is poor, but as expected for a 20 watt range adapter. It has a manually replaceable fuse, but doesn't have a safety listing. It is only about $20, so not terrible, but compared to the next one, maybe not the one. The sewer has a few more watts and a couple of other brands and offerings that are out there online. It is a little better on power quality, has more ports, and it has a resettable fuse. Also, same price as the Unidapt at $20. It didn't have any compatibility issues when trying the various plugs out. Also, it does not have a safety listing. The Zender 61 watt Passport 2 multi-plug thing is obviously the winner between these three adapters. It can charge almost anything with its various output voltage modes and the ports work with various plugs and outlets I tested with. It also doesn't have a safety listing. It is the most expensive by a lot though at 56 US dollars. Overall, it looks like it might be the best idea to just get a safe outlet adapter and use the best USB adapter you can find in that outlet adapter. These fall into the category of trying to do a lot of things and maybe not doing all of them so great. The Zender is probably the most premium, but the sewer is competitive if you just want to get and use it as an outlet adapter and ignore the USB ports. We'll have to do a teardown to find out if these adapters have good USB adapter safety inside another time. Final step, applying the stickers. Yep, they've been tested. Still working on a new version of the sticker where I can write in the rating. You can type in travel and find where all these adapters fall on pqs.app. Thanks for watching. I'm not sure which video will be next week, but for now I have the RAV power scheduled and that may get moved. Check my website for upcoming videos. There's a schedule of release dates. I have more of these adapters to get through, so many more videos in the future. Bye for now.